that experience that I had of taking a look at a line from Shakespeare and watching little light bulbs go on over students' heads, that was really the best. So my parents always encouraged me to read. It was always one of my favorite, favorite things to do. I loved getting carried away to an alternate reality, uh, to some place I hadn't been before. English was my favorite subject when I was here at Bellarmine, but it was not really until my senior year that I really, really caught the bug. I had this young Jesuit named Greg Tiernan, and he was electric. He was magnificent. I wanted to be like him. I wanted to teach poetry and Shakespeare and, and have that experience with students of my own. I had this great English class senior year, but I also had this terrible senior retreat. We went up to El Retiro and it was hellfire and brimstone and I was not happy. I was angry. If this is what the church is, then I don't want any part of it. And when I came back here, I didn't come back here for the Jesuits. I came back here to coach speech and debate and win trophies and I came back here to light little candles with poetry for my students. At first, I really felt like a hypocrite. Because here I was at this Jesuit school, and here I was going to Mass with the kids because that was my job, but I didn't really feel it. And then that changed. That changed for a lot of reasons. I had an alcohol problem, and I got sober. Um, and in that process, something happened spiritually to me. I started going on these retreats with Bellarmine kids and sharing the, the challenges that I had with religion and with faith and that my journey was not an easy one and I still had doubts. It was also through teaching books like Catcher in the Rye and James Joyce's Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man, which were books that I had taught before but I didn't realize how much they told my story a teenager really struggling with issues of faith and, and, and morality. So my faith life, which I had been ashamed of, just got blown up and uh, became the best part of my life. When I got into recovery, one of the things that I learned is that there are things in my life that I have no control over. There are ways in my life that I am powerless. And the only way for me to survive uh, is to plug into some other power. My prayer every morning became, you know, I, I don't know what to do, God help me. Uh, show me, show me the way. Praying that and asking to be shown the direction is what led me to start working with, with addicts and alcoholics. That was life-changing because the more that I helped others, the stronger my, my faith became. Everything that I have been given, the gifts that I have been given, whatever it was that helped me to be a teacher, that helped me to be a coach, that helped me to be a friend to my students, those really don't have anything to do with me. Those were given to me by my spiritual father, by my higher power. So I give them back to him.